good morning dear students welcome to the third and the last part of the topic that we are discussing that is female reproductive system okay until now we have covered the topics that is ovary uh, fallopian tubes uterus and uh, if i am not wrong cervix right or yeah up till uterus we have completed right so now we are moving towards the a uh, uh, remaining four you can say uh, organs of female reproductive system so starting with the cervix so yes very small description and that already we have learned uh, in the diagram right so this is the you can say that uh, a narrow part right through which uterus opens into the vaginal cavity right and this cervical canal is the cavity of cervix right it is cavity of cervix is referred as a cervical canal and this cervical canal along with the vaginal tract it forms birth canal right so this is a small description regarding the cervix rest of the details we i guess we have discussed that is presence of stretch receptors the dilatation right so at the time of childbirth what a gynecologist observe right is this dilatation of this part right the cervical canal right so then and then they will be able to decide whether it is right time for the uh, uh, you can say uh, childbirth or not okay moving towards the next is vagina okay so vagina uh, as you all know just like uterus it is uh, located between urinary bladder and rectum right so it's a thin wall tube as compared to uterus uterus is a thick wall structure while vaginal cavity definitely vaginal tract it is a thin wall tube now it is very important to note what type of tissue is present in the vagina right now because there are lots of you can say that uh, a uh, 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 a continuous damage right to the vaginal tract that happens say for example because it is open to the uh, uh, you said uh, atmosphere right uh, definitely they are covered with the external genitalia right that is labia major and labia minor but then still it is the part say for example during the menstrual cycle even during intercourse right so lots of wearing and tearing happens and normally when you have lots of wearing and tearing then number of layer right in epithelial tissue is always more right so number of layer we call it as a striations right and if number of layers are more we call it as a stratified tissue right so stratification right? So it's not called a striation very sorry it is called as a stratification so because wearing and tearing is more that's why the type of tissue is stratified squamous epithelium right squamous it is very flat right just like tiles right so that's that is the shape of the tissue so that's why squamous epithelium but here there are more layer right many layer of the squamous epithelium that's why the type of tissue is a stratified squamous epithelium just like skin right human skin also is stratified squamous epithelium similarly vaginal tract is also a stratified squamous epithelium now moving toward very interesting topic that is ph now the ph of the vaginal tract is acidic right and uh, then question arises definitely that why it is acidic so acidity is because of presence of bacteria right which type of bacteria here there is presence of anaerobic bacteria now why these bacteria are present so it's a natural mechanism because it is definitely not completely covered through the skin right and those areas say for example mouth nose right there has to be some additional protection wherever there is an uh 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 you can say that uh, uh, the skin barrier is not present right definitely the additional protective mechanism should be present say for example in your buccal cavity that is mouth you have presence of bacteria right you know that spirogets are there right so it's a natural mechanism by which you can say that the other bacteria pathogenic bacteria by which if say for example in intestine also you have lots of normal flora right so buccal flora intestinal flora these are naturally you can say design or you can say they are now been part of our system so that if pathogenic bacteria or fungus if enters in your body then that will have a strong competition okay so that is the reason why vagina also have flora right which you call as a vaginal flora right so oral flora intestinal flora vaginal flora these are some of the examples that you can consider right now we have said that it is anaerobic bacteria so definitely the metabolism is is in absence of oxygen in such a case you know that the glucose right that is derived from the glycogen now will be converted to lactic acid normally 
right when you have a normal Krebs cycle then the process is different when you have an anaerobic metabolism definitely at the end product you will have less ATP and as a byproduct you will have production of lactic acid and now you can consider that why this vaginal pH is acidic because the bacterial flora which is present in the vaginal tract that will ferment right this is glycogen ultimately it will be converted to glucose and finally into lactic acid right so that will result in a low vaginal pH right so that is a characteristic one this pH is also important because the semen that is released say for example during intercourse if semen is released right that is called as the insemination then normally these sperm cells in the semen are coagulated to conserve the energy they are not that motile okay if they will have motility during their passage to, through the seminal vesicle and uh, uh, you can say the urethra then the motility will be lost right or it, the energy will be lost right so to conserve the energy there is a special you can say process by which the sperms are coagulated in semen that coagulation is removed is unleashed uh, once they are released in the vagina in, in that is a pH dependent process right maybe we will discuss somewhere in one more lecture that we could uh, uh, design right there we will discuss these all details but the activity of the sperm cell definitely the motility right activity in terms of motility will be enhanced in the acidic pH of the vaginal tract right that is very much important chalo fine so function definitely that is called as a capacitation right uh, again I am not going to get in that details but that process by which the uh, there is an activation of sperm that is called as a capacitation and the acidic pH of vaginal tract lot helps a lot in case of capacitation fine function definitely uh, it is the passageway right uh, for the delivery that is childbirth as I told you along with the cervical canal it is the one which forms the birth canal right as well as the menses right that is menstrual flow also leave the body from this passageway right that is vagina right uh, except these two cases definitely it will remain empty and if this vaginal tract remains empty then you call it as a vaginal vestibule we will check in the next diagram right so yeah this is a very important detail now distal end distal means the one which is on the present on the far right that is towards the uh, uh, outer atmosphere right so vaginal tract on its distal side say for example my finger are located distal to my hand right so this is distal so distal end of vagina is partially closed by a thin fold of a mucosal membrane and that mucosal membrane here you can just see that right this lighter part what you are observing so this is called as a right it is not completely covered you can just see that this is still this is called as a foramen foramen means hole right so foramen right and a surrounding mucosal fold right membrane structure that is called as a hymen okay so hymen is a membrane thin membrane which covers the vaginal orifice right now this could be of different anatomy i have shown here different shape right in which it could be present right we are not going to get in details but just these are just variations right that could be present right as a, a, a you can say a mucosal fold right over this vaginal orifice right this is actually a spread part that has been shown otherwise definitely it is covered by this you can say it, uh, uh, labia minor and labia major right which we will check in next slides fine now there are lots of myths and facts regarding the hymen and if you remember that uh, uh, in the learning objectives right that we have discussed in the first part there also I have mentioned that we are going to identify these uh, facts and myths regarding the hymen right normally de definitely it is uh, 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 because it is a thin mucosal mold uh, uh, mucosal fold so normally it is been torn it is you can say broken during the first coitus that is intercourse fine but then it is not applicable in each case it is not always possible that this will be true right and that is why I said that there are lots of myths right which I, I totally condemn right they are totally unethical fine so which are these myths right that are prevalent in the society first one that presence of hymen is an reliable indicator of virginity or sexual experience this is totally wrong okay that presence of you can say that hymen is definitely not a reliable indicator right it is not a reliable indicator of virginity or sexual experience why because it is not always possible right 
that say for example we have said that it is often torn during first coitus but it is possible that uh, some physical activities right like say for example horse riding say for example sudden jolt right or maybe say for example use of some medical devices medical devices means say for example if uh, during the you can say that uh, uh, menstruation cycle if there is excessive bleeding right normally the volume of blood that is lost during the each menstrual cycle is 100 to 150 ml right it is not more than that but some cases of dysmenorrhea this refers to painful right and menorrhea refers to flow of menstruation right so painful menstruation flow is called as a dysmenorrhea right in some condition of dysmenorrhea there is an excessive bleeding and to stop this bleeding doctor gives such type of a device to stop the bleeding right this is a surgical device which is called as a tampon right vaginal tampon this is a bullet shaped structure right which is made up of cotton and this is to be inserted in the vagina so that bleeding can be stopped right so it is a surgical device so use of such surgical device that also can break that also can torn this hymen right so it does not mean that there is you can say it a uh, uh, loss of virginity or uh, uh, there is presence of sexual experience right so these are total myths right such situation can also result in breakage of the hymen on other side it is also possible that in some woman uh, this membrane is thick enough so even after coitus it remains as such it is not broken right because remember that it is it is partially covered it is not fully covered okay so such case definitely such type of a myths should not be you can say that uh, come into our mind right or if they are prevalent in the society we should uh, try to aware the people right so again this is also myth right some people uh, uh, have uh, such type of thought that it is a membrane or tissue which completely covers the vaginal orifice now this is quite understandable that if it completely covers vaginal orifice then how it is possible for menses to come out right so it does not completely cover the vaginal orifice it is just partially covering the vaginal orifice right even clinicians are not properly uh, trained right to assess the uh, uh, anatomical you can say that uh, uh, you can say the description of this hymen right so they are not that trained right they are also not definitely they are aware of all anatomical features but they are not trained to assess such type of a situation right so such type of myths right should not be prevalent right and now once we are knowing definitely uh, 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 we should uh, try to aware the people regarding such type of events okay moving towards the next that is external genitalia right which is referred as vulva also it is referred as a pudendum now this vulva or external genital organs we have four different uh, or uh, you guys know, parts right so each of this we are going to discuss first one is mons pubis mons pubis is a cushion like tissue right it's a fatty tissue connective tissue right that is present on the top of this you can say that uh, opening right vaginal orifice right you can just see that and normally it is uh, it is you can say present right to prevent the friction right or to provide the cushioning effect during the intercourse right that is mons pubis so mons refers to mountain right so mountain like structure that are, that are present in the pubic region that is called as a mons pubis second is labia major or it is also called as a labium major now word labia refers to lips right so they are lips like structure right fleshy folds large fleshy folds right so major refers to large and labia refers to lips so there are two lips major big lips like structure which will cover this female reproductive tract okay so that case they are just like scrotum in case of male reproductive system they are protecting testis similar you can sort of a structure you can imagine here third one is labia minor here there is a spelling mistake it has to be minor right so labia minor or labium minor uh, these are just like labia major but they are present anteriorly right just inside to the labia major and they are small in size right so otherwise they are same same labia minor and on the anterior most part right on the upper junction of this labia minor you can just see that right this is a part which is referred as a clitoris right so at the upper junction of labia minor which is a most anterior part uh, 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 sorry 
or the uh, the innermost part right not anterior but most innermost part of the vulva that is called as a clitoris clitoris have presence of erectile tissue and this erectile tissue is just like penis right so the sexual stimulation right definitely will lead to a shot of an erection right and that sensation is in this part that is clitoris right each one of these we are going to get in detail of this right so first one starting with the first one as you discussed mons refers to mountain right so it's a cushion of fatty tissue nothing else which is covered by skin and pubic hair right second is labia major as i told you labia refers to lips and major refers to large right so this are fleshy fold of tissue which extend downs from the mons pubis and they surround the vaginal opening right definitely they are having a uh, 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 the protective sort of structure right so inner structures are getting protected because labia major makes a, a covering over these structures right inner surface of the labia major is hairless and outer surface is covered by sebaceous and sweat gland right so there will be release of sebum right sweating right perspiration so protective fluids right uh, uh, they are released by the outer surface right just like skin right and also there is presence of hair follicles on the outer surface right now there is a very important word right that is homologous structure now actually there are two words which you need to understand one is homologous structure and second is analogous structure homologous structure means those type of structures which are similar in origin and basic structure right structure you definitely you can understand but origin means embryo embryologically right we are not going to get in details of embryology but uh, uh, embryonically you have three layers right when the initial phase of zygote differentiation is been there right then you have ectoderm mesoderm and endoderm right so origin is same that means say for example a layer is origin from ectoderm so maybe say for example female it is developed from ectoderm male also it is developed from ectoderm that is what you call as a similarity in origin okay that's what i mean so similar in structure similar in origin but maybe they are different in function this type of structures they are referred as a homologous structure okay other word is analogous right say for example uh, uh, wings wings in birds and wings in insect these two are called as analogous why because their function is same right they are for flying but their origin is different right they are derived from different embryonic layer their structure is also different if you take a section ts then wings of birds they are having different structure wings of insects they are having different structure so structure is different origin is also different but function is same these structures are referred as a analogous structure right i hope it is clear right now here we are going to discuss the structure which is homologous to labia major right this is present in female the structure which is present homologous in case of male is definitely scrotum right so definitely scrotum is having different function in case of the male reproductive system but their structure and their origin is similar to labia major that's why we call it as a homologous structure at the end of this lecture i will give you a summary right i will ask you a summary of such uh, prepare, uh, to prepare uh, such homologous structures which are present in male as compared to the female reproductive system okay that is what i am going to ask you fine so few of that i have shown here definitely we are moving towards the third one that is labia minor here definitely these are just like labia major but they are smaller and they are inside of or they are under the labia major right so there are two protective layer right the vulva is first protected by labia minor then outer side it is protected by labia major okay it is as simple as that moving toward a very important and a interesting structure is a clitoris clitoris is a tiny finger like structure and this is composed of because the erectile tissue location definitely it is the most anterior part inferior part of the vulva and it is lying at the upper junction right we have seen in the diagram that at the upper junction of this two labia minor just above the urethral opening right urethral opening is separate in case of female a uh, 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 reproductive system right in case of male there is a common passage for the uh, uh, urine as well as the sperm right so that's why you call as a genito urinal urinal tract genito that is referring to the gametes right that is sperm and urinal that is definitely to the urine 
so male urethra is the passage common passage for urine and gamete but in female there are two separate openings vaginal uh, uh, opening is passage for the gametes right while the urethral opening is the passage for the you can say that uh, 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 urine right so just on the top side right there is a urethra but beneath there is a vaginal opening right so in the uh, lower part you have vaginal opening top of that you have urethral opening and to the top of this right above this you have at upper junction of the labia minor this clitoris is located right so importance as i already told you that it is having erectile tissue now erectile tissue actually is there are two types of erectile tissue right uh, one is corpora cavernosa which is mentioned here and that is what is present in the clitoris second is called as a corpora spongiosum okay i am repeating again corpora cavernosa and corpora spongiosum these two tissues are present in penis okay and these are sponge like structure sponge like structure that means they are having sinuses right sinuses which can be filled with the blood so when there is a phase of erection in case of male sexual excitation right then there is increased blood flow towards the penis and this increased blood is filled in these sinuses which are present in this erectile tissue and that leads to enlargement and rigidity in the penis that is what you call as a erection so erection is nothing but it's a increase in a blood flow towards the penis similar sort of erection can be observed in clitoris and that is the reason why you call this part as a homologous to the penis but the difference is i showed one is definitely here only corpora cavernosa is there right corpora spongiosum is present in female in a form of a bulb of vestibule okay so that bulb of vestibule will create a you can a bulb of penis that sort of a structure in case of female right while the you, you know that that uh, uh, the you can say initial part of the penis right that is slightly bulged what you called as a, a glans penis right so that is you can consider as a bulb of vestibule in case of female while rest of the part you can consider as a corpora cavernosa and that is like clitoris right so it is this structure is homologous to penis right and this is a very sensitive part in case of female right uh, now definitely there is difference one difference is in this case clitoris only corpora cavernosa is there second thing is there is no ejaculatory duct there is no reproductive duct right so ejaculation just like penis is not possible in case of clitoris it is just there right as an you can say for the you can say the, the uh, short of an you can say sexual excitation in form of a erection that sort of a process you can consider but then it is different from the penis because it is not having a reproductive duct right that is a difference fine the skin which covers the glands of this clitoris right that is called as a prepuce okay again if you just recall uh, in case of uh, penis right the initial part is called as a glans penis right or bulge part right that is called as a glans penis and on this glans penis there is a skin right uh, a removable sort of a skin that is called as a uh, foreskin or that is also referred as a prepuce right Gla uh, foreskin is also termed as a prepuce so just like glans of penis here there is glans of clitoris and glans of clitoris you have prepuce that is foreskin right so this foreskin is called as a prepuce which is attached by frenulum whenever you have a small uh, uh, you can say connective tissue which connects with the original gland right this upper covering tissue is connected with the lower structure that is called as a frenulum just like say for example tongue we have frenulum linguae right similarly in case of uh, 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 penis also there is a structure which you called as a frenulum and clitoris also uh, that this prepuce is attached to the glands of clitoris by frenulum okay so this is the these are the components of the vulva one by one we have all we have learned this is a spread part that i have shown and that's why this vaginal vestibule is visible right vaginal orifice is vis visible to you right one by one we are checking the outermost part is called as a labia major right as i told you that we have shown here a spread part right so that is open structure that we have shown then second part that in in, in, in you can say interior to this you can say that uh, labia major is labia minor which also have shown the spread part and thus it is exposing the vaginal vestibule vestibule as i told you that 
is a place which is otherwise empty right say for example buccal vestibule right the place of the oral cavity which is definitely is remaining empty otherwise if you are eating a food it will be occupied but otherwise it remains empty so what you will call it is a buccal vestibule similarly vaginal cavity also wherever there is a flow of menstrual cycle or during intercourse it is definitely occupied but otherwise it is empty so you will call it as a vaginal vestibule right so this is exposing the vaginal experience right here on the top of the said, labia minor at the upper junction right just above this urethral opening this is urethral opening above this urethral opening there is a structure which you call as a clitoris clitoris is covered by a skin that is called as a prepuce okay and it is attached to the clitoris by frenulum which is not shown here so this is the prepuce this is clitoris and this is vaginal orifice vaginal orifice also i have shown here a dilated part right and this is covered by a thin membranous fold and that is referred as a hymen right i hope it is now very clear to you components of the vulva right we will check again but once we understand one gland and which openings are present in the vaginal vestibule that we will cover first so bartholin gland bartholin gland definitely is a gland which is present uh, uh, the, there are total four glands so one pair on each side right so two of these are big and two of these are small the one which is big which is called as a greater bartholin gland right and one which is smaller that is called as a lesser bartholin gland or it is also called as a vestibular gland right so bartholin gland is also termed as a vestibular gland right now this the function of this is similar to cowper's gland in case of male uh, Cowper's gland, you know that it is also referred as a bulbo urethral gland. Why it is called as a bulbo urethral gland? Because there is a bulb like structure, slightly swollen structure, which is present on the either side of urethra, male urethra, right? So, swollen part, that's why bulb. So, that's why bulbo urethral gland. You know that what is the function of bulbo urethral gland or Cowper's gland? That during sexual excitation, Cowper's gland secretes a fluid which is alkaline in nature, and this alkaline fluid reduces the acidity of the urethra male urethra because urine has created acidic ph so it has to be removed and second part is second uh, important part is it functions as a lubricating fluid during the sexual intercourse right so just similar to copper's gland bartholin gland also they are you can say that releasing such type of a lubricating fluid during the sexual intercourse so definitely this structure is homologous to copper's gland of the male okay and location definitely these are located on the lateral side of the vagina and both sides you have bartholin duct which opens into it's a exocrine gland right so it is having duct and that opens into vestibule function definitely it is secreting an alkaline fluid during the sexual excitement so that uh, lubricating uh, uh, function can be executed right friction during the sexual intercourse can be reduced right so this is bartholin gland so vaginal vestibule what is vaginal vestibule at the terminal part of vagina the urethra opens separately and thus it creates a common chamber right because it's common chamber urino that is referred to urine genital that is because of the genital organs is also having an uh, opening right so this two opening will create a sinus and that is called as a vaginal vestibule right so it opens outside through a slit like aperture or a triangular roughly triangular shape and that is called as a vestibule so how many openings are there one is definitely yeah these are the three openings that you can consider one opening is that is definitely the vaginal tract second of opening is of urethra so this is an external urethral orifice and third is definitely has to be somewhere here and that is because of your vestibular gland or what you called as a, 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 a bartholin's gland right so urethral opening that is on the most anterior end right vaginal orifice that is on the posterior end and on the either side that is lateral side that is you have openings of the bartholin gland okay so this is creating the vaginal vestibule right i hope now it is very clear to you right different parts of vulva right you have understood very clearly right so moving towards the last part of the uh, uh, today's topic and that is mammary glands okay mammary glands definitely are referred as a accessory sex organ right now the question that arises in your mind that what do we mean or why mammary glands they are referred as a accessory sex organ now definitely the location is quite dif uh, uh, distal as compared to the female other female reproductive system right but it is considered as an important part of the 
female reproductive system because it is functionally and structurally supporting many processes right which process say for example ovulation now you say that so ovulation is definitely because of FSH, LH, estrogen right like these all hormonal uh, changes they produces ovulation right so what is role of uh, mammary glands here so remember that wherever there is a childbirth right after that childbirth definitely prolactin level will be high this higher level of prolactin they definitely have influence of FSH and LH right and in that case once this FSH and LH are, are at lower side definitely in absence of LH ovulation cannot happen this situation is referred as a lactational amenorrhea right menorrhea we have already learned meno refers to menstruation roya refers to flow and a refers to absence so a menorrhea that is absence of menstruation this physiological condition is existent uh, right from the childbirth uh, 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 up to 3 to 6 months right so this could be uh, of variable uh, like a duration in uh, 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 individual cases right so but then 3 to 6 months on an average you can consider so for 3 to 6 months because there are higher level of prolactin ovulation is absent this is also a natural method of family planning right you all must be aware of right so that is called as a lactational amenorrhea so definitely ovulation is affected for definitely if ovulation is uh, uh, is definitely you said affected fertilization also could not happen right so after childbirth 3 to 6 months phase right is uh, uh, fertilization cannot happen right under the influence of prolactin right similarly pregnancy definitely there is development of mammary glands it do support there are lots of changes that happens in case of mammary glands right and definitely it is important for birth and child care right child care it is very important because for a child it is the only source of nutrition okay not only nutrition it is also source of passive immunity right initial milk that is secreted that is called as a colostrum right and that is a very uh, good source of uh, 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 immunoglobulin right and that case it provides the passive immunity right so not only for child for mother also breastfeeding is important because breastfeeding reduces the chances of breast cancer right so definitely in any case it should be promoted right and uh, 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 the quantity of milk definitely that is required approximately 10 to 15 minutes lactation that is quite enough at every 2-3 uh, hour gap right that is enough for the child initial milk that is released by mother that is having more carbohydrate level right for initial few minutes then afterwards you have proteins and then afterwards whatever milk that is released is having a higher amount of fat okay so duration wise composition of the milk that is released from the breast also gets altered right uh, definitely you will get uh, details of this maybe in higher semester or maybe you will learn in post graduation right so we will not get in details but uh, yeah important hormones in this case regarding the memory, gl memory glands you have two hormones which could produce effect one is definitely uh, uh, prolactin and second is oxytocin both we have discussed in endocrine this is increasing the synthesis of milk right so that's why it is called as a prolactin and oxytocin it stimulates the lactiferous ducts we will check in the letter diagram right to to uh, uh, eject the milk right so it's a milk let down hormone right this is milk synthesizing hormone this is milk let down hormone right so prolactin and oxytocin very important hormones that you need to consider fine uh, definitely in uh, we are mammalians so definitely mammary gland is a characteristic of male and female both but you know that the development of mammary gland only occurs in case of female right and that is uh, in the age of puberty and the reason is definitely under the influence of estrogen right so it is the estrogen which is responsible for the development of in case of male if by chance there is an abnormal development that is called as a gynecomastia right so gynecomastia is a condition by which abnormal enlargement of mammary gland could occur right so this is regarding now moving towards the anatomy so this is a sectional view of the mammary gland breast as you can see that it is largely made up of fat and a glandular tissue right so this is all glandular tissue and it is supported by fatty tissue right connective tissue and this is also source of energy right lots of energy can be derived for the synthesis of milk from this fatty tissue right so this glandular part is having memory lobes right 
and there are 15 to 20 memory lobes present in each breast okay so initially we have seen that it is made up of fat and a glandular eucosal tissue that glandular tissue is having 15 to 20 memory lobe each of these memory lobe they have lots of alveoli right single is called as a alveolus right so cluster of alveoli that will create memory lobe you can just see that small small structures these are called as a alveoli right so this alveoli will create a large structure that is called as a memory lobe right so this is site where the milk is you can say that synthesized right so definitely milk is synthesized and secreted right in the cavity of this alveoli right and this is under the influence of prolactin okay definitely once the milk is synthesized now it will move towards small ductules right because the exocrine gland you have all small ductules these all ductules will join to form a duct common duct which is called as a memory duct right everywhere you have the word memory once it is now been transferred to the memory duct it will go towards the larger part swollen part we always refer as a ampulla right we have always remember that a swollen part a wider part is referred as a ampulla and from this ampulla the milk will be you said now traveling through lactiferous duct so if there is an oxytocin then these lactiferous ducts will be contracted and then this milk will be releasing through the nipples right so here the lactiferous ducts are joining right nipple is having a uh, presence of uh, melanin and uh, your keratinized epithelia right uh, because these proteins are protective in nature right so uh, uh, you said color is because of the melanin and keratin is because there is lots of wearing and tearing right during the suckling mechanism right that child creates uh, to prevent the damage of epithelia uh, 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 the uh, you can say nipples are covered with a keratinized tissue and that is called as the areola right these are the part of chest region so you can just see that ribs uh, some of the muscles which are present between the ribs which is which are referred as the intercostal muscles and these are uh, pectoralis major muscle right so pectoralis uh, uh, refers to chest right wherever you have the word pectoral it means it is related with the chest major because they are large right there are two types of muscle pectoral is minor pectoral is major here I have shown only pectoral is major muscle right so this is a sectional view of memory gland and with this we have completed this whole chapter so you can just check this diagram we have covered each and every part of the female reproductive system uh, uh, now in the learning objective I have mentioned you that at the end of this lecture you will be able to identify uh, uh, the parts of the female reproductive system. So let us check whether you are able to identify or not. So you can pause my video and uh, then one by one you can just try to reveal right whether the words that you have identified the parts that you are able to identify or not right. So I am uh, uh, hiding this part I am locking this name right you just go through this name and then you can definitely check your knowledge okay so starting with the first one this definitely is a part of uterus and this is cavity within uterus so this is referred as a uterine cavity okay these are different layers innermost part of the uterus is referred as a what do you mean by inner layer endo and uterus is called as a matrium so that's why endometrium this is thick muscular part so muscle refers to myo that's why myometrium this is a thin membranous covering which is present outside that's why epi or perimetrium okay chalo this part this is called as a fundus uterine fundus okay uh, fundus is always referred referring to the upper part say for example in stomach also you have structure like uh, cardiac stomach fundus and pylorus so fundus refers to what the upper part of stomach is referred as a fundus right so similar situation you can consider here chalo moving towards this part this is called as fallopian tube right very good chalo fallopian tube is having three parts this narrow part is referred as ethmus this wider part is referred as ampulla and the anterior part towards the ovary that is called as a infundibulum infundibulum is having a finger like projection that is called as fimbri very good chalo this part which is located in the pelvic region and been bound to the pelvic wall by these ligaments which is responsible for oogenesis yes it is ovary right so here yes it is narrow part that is called as a cervix neck region right cervix also is referred as a neck region and this is a cervical canal definitely this is vagina right so very easy right uh, definitely uh, this year you may not have 
theory exam in in case you will have mcq exam right so in that case diagram based question also you should be able to answer that's why i have gone for this type of a learning method okay let's check uh, the female reproductive system in lateral view so here is an ovary you can just see that these are fimbri so fallopian tube right here is ampulla here is ethmus and now it is definitely open in uterus so this part is uterus you can also identify with the presence of thick muscular structure this is endometrium right and this is myometrium okay so uterus and this narrow part is cervix vaginal tract vaginal tract you have openings that is vulva right and then finally labia minor here on the top of you know, upper junction of labia minor there is clitoris there is labia major and here there is mons pubis okay uh, this as i have shown in the uterus and in the vagina right uterus is located between urinary bladder and rectum right similarly vagina also is located between the urinary bladder and rectum and this also shows that there is a different passage for urine and gametes in case of because that female reproductive system so two different tracks you can identify okay this whole structure is present in the body cavity right so this is abdominal cavity lower abdominal cavity is been shown here i hope all names are clear now there are some ducts which are present in the female reproductive system this ducts will help the uh, temporary storage of the ovum right and also it will facilitate the transportation of the ovum these are called as a female accessory ducts right in male also there are such accessory ducts present in male there are four accessory ducts that are present in female there are three which are those three definitely the transportation is through this so that's why first one is fallopian tube then it will be if fertilized right then it will definitely travel through uterus not fertilized that also it will it will travel through this so second is definitely in the uterus and then ultimately it will be traveling through the vaginal cavity so these are three ducts that you can consider as a female accessory ducts okay so now it is very clear to you i am locking again this part you try you have to remember right you have to memorize this right you can pause the video in between but you have to identify right so that is compulsory on your part chalo first one very easy fallopian tube this one one which stores the urine right so bladder is a bag like structure that's why urinary bladder this is a protective bone which uh, covers this pelvic cavity so that's why it's a pubic region right so that's why pubic bone okay this is a erectile tissue present in female can you name it yes it is clitoris this is a larger lip that's why labia major and yes towards this side now this is ovary this one is a fimbri right this is body cavity this is uterus this definitely narrow part cervix and then finally vaginal tract and this is a small lip like structure that's why labium minor right so with this we have completed the lateral view also very easy and very interesting way to learn right i hope you will all like right i request you to give feedback right constructive feedback right if corrections also are be needed from my side then also you give feedback or if you like my video then also definitely you can show likes you can show comments in my video right and a small surprising assignment and a test at the end of lecture so assignment that is for uh, 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 you is that you have to identify homologous structures which are present in male right female structures i have shown here the counterpart that is homologous structures present in the male have to you have to identify you have to search and then you have to uh, uh, send assignment to me either by whatsapp or by email okay one i am just explaining say for example ovaries right so here the answer will be testis okay very easy right structure is same uh, origin is also same right so in that case it is referred as a homologous structure right so likewise you have to identify all structures in the male right and this you will send to me at the end there is a surprising test let's check what knowledge you have gained through my lecture right so you have to identify these sentences as a true or false and if these sentences are found false you need to rectify these sentences okay so starting with the first one the ovaries only produce estrogen is it right or wrong definitely it is false okay so what will be the right answer what will be the true statement ovaries produces both 
estrogen as well as progesterone as such it produces relaxin also inhibin also but two major steroidal hormones definitely are estrogen and progesterone right active form of estrogen is called as a estradiol so if it is mentioned as estradiol then also it is fine okay chalo second ovulation is the process of ovum formation true or false definitely this also is false right why it is false ovulation is not a process of ovum formation it is the process of release of ovum formation or in other words you can also call that if you want to identify process of ovum formation it is actually oogenesis right so in both way you can write the true statement chalo third one fallopian tube is also called as oviduct right or wrong definitely it is right right statement is true chalo fourth one endometrium is outer layer of uterine wall endo refers to what inner right it is not an outer layer. so here this answer will be false and right answer is definitely endometrium is the innermost layer of the uterine wall or if you want to make this outer as such then here you have to consider perimetrium right so perimetrium is outer layer of uterine wall. this how also you can write fine chalo next sentence alveolar glands produces milk just right now we have checked the anatomy of breast is it right or wrong yes it is right right so it is the alveolar gland which will produce the milk chalo next is oxytocin induces alveolar gland to deliver milk through the nipples is this right at first sense it seems right because hormone is definitely right oxytocin will induce the milk ejection right it will lead to delivery of the milk right on the outer side but then it is not stimulating alveolar gland it is stimulating lactiferous ducts right so the target organ is been shown wrong here so that's why statement is false chalo next is menarche is termination of the menstrual cycle what is your opinion is it right yes definitely it is false why it is initiation of the menstrual cycle right so just this arrow it has to be on this part it's, it's mistake from my side so this arrow has to be on this word right termination instead of termination the word has to be initiation chalo finally menopause occurs due to normal aging of the ovaries yes it is right and this normal aging yippee. yes yippee right congratulations to all of you for successful completion of your knowledge test fine so yes normally that is after the age of 45 to 50 these ovaries becomes rudimentary right so non functional in that case there will be no menstrual cycle that condition is called as a menopause okay chalo so with this thank you very much i am still awaiting for your positive uh, uh, feedbacks constructive suggestions and definitely likes or, or on my on my video lectures okay uh, thank you very much right next lecture we will meet for the changes that happens in case of menstrual cycle hormonal changes that happens in case of menstrual cycle that will be our next topic of discussion okay thank you very much